Robert Hometz is the U.S. Under Secretary of State for Economic Growth, Energy, and the Environment. He has been dealing with China since the early 1970s, while serving on the economic team of the then National Security Advisor Harry Kissinger. Since then, he has visited China more than 60 times. China Daily interviewed Mr. Hometz at Asia Society on U.S.-China economic relationship. What's your comment on how U.S. should be patient and impatient? About China playing by the rules. Obviously, this has been mentioned repeatedly by, you know,、um, President Obama, Vice President Biden, and、uh, Secretary of State Hillary in their meeting with、uh, Vice President Xi. So China is a developing country. You know,、uh, compared with the U.S., it's in the early stage of development, and you cannot、uh, everything to change overnight. So how patient U.S. going to be? I do think. That what's interesting about China is that, as I say, first of all, it's very pragmatic. Second, what's very interesting about China and very smart when you think about the reforms China has taken over the last thirty、uh, years or so, primarily since Deng Xiaoping,、um, and that is the fact that it has used the pressure. Of conforming to international rules、mm-hmm. to leverage changes domestically in China. I mean, if you think of of, of、uh, Zhu Rongji、mm-hmm. uh, as an example, one of the reasons he wanted China to be in the WTO is not just that it would give China better market access to the world, which、mm-hmm. it did quite dramatically, but he also used China's membership in WTO.、Mm-hmm. To make changes in China, market-oriented、mm-hmm. changes in China,、mm-hmm. that he knew would make China more competitive and more market-oriented, and it was a brilliant, a brilliant approach.、Mm-hmm. So you probably read the World Bank、uh, report on China, China 2030. Have your colleague, former colleague Rob Zolik, actually consulted you, talked to you about the report before it was、uh, published? I mean, what's your comment on the report? I think what's interesting about it is not that China is going to do everything that the report recommended immediately.、Mm-hmm. I do think what's useful is that it will trigger a debate in China、mm-hmm. about the direction of Chinese policy,、mm-hmm. and that's really its important role. That serious Chinese、mm-hmm. who are thinking about the economy over the long term. One of the great strengths of China is that, as I mentioned before,、mm-hmm. is Chinese are long-term thinkers. And I think this will set up some very useful debate in think tanks throughout China, in various newspapers and magazines. There'll be lots of articles about the report, about pieces of the report, various components.、Mm-hmm. And, and as a result of that, I do think China will reevaluate some, not all, of its policies. And even if it doesn't change them overnight, it will start thinking: How do we change? First of all,、mm-hmm. in the environment. Every every Chinese I know is upset、mm-hmm. about the environment.、Mm-hmm. Everywhere.、Um, now again, I take your point. You can't do it overnight. The, you're building new coal-fired power plants. You need energy. I understand that. But it seems to me that China doesn't want to be、mm-hmm. the world's big production platform.、Mm-hmm. If it means huge amounts of additional pollution、mm-hmm. or continued very strong appetite for uh, CO2 uh,、mm-hmm. emitting uh, fuels, so I do think that over a period of time, China is going to look much more seriously、mm-hmm. at its environmental problems and how do you structure the economy、mm-hmm. to be more environmentally? Where where is it? And what are the what are the health consequences? And what does it mean for? Chinese society, if you have、mm-hmm. burn all that fossil fuel, it's not、mm-hmm. not good. So, even if we didn't say a word、mm-hmm. about it,、um, it's not for us. It's really China would be evaluating it、mm-hmm. on its own. Now, now it's Super Tuesday. Are you bothered by the rhetoric in the media among the public? You know,、uh, China is a threat. And、uh, you know China is stealing American jobs, stealing intellectual property rights. You know China is taking advantage of the relationship. 
you know, are you bothered by that? Are you, your job negatively impacted by that? I think there are, we have real issues with China, no question about it. Serious mm -hmm. issues that we have to address, both of us. But to blame uh, the major problems in the United States that we face today on China and, and regard China as the primary cause of those, mm -hmm. in my judgment, first of all, it's inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Second, it's even worse in the sense that if you blame someone else for your problems, you won't do what you need to do at home to fix them. So uh, blaming China, I think there are issues that hurt, movie industry certainly hurt by copyright mm -hmm. uh, protection, the software industry certainly hurt by piracy of intellectual property. Certain American companies are hurt by Chinese subsidies. Some companies are hurt by mm -hmm. the fact that they have to transfer technology in order to invest in China. The, these are serious problems, so I want to make that clear. But I also think it's important for American government officials and others to make clear to Americans that even when you add those problems up and, and, and accept that they're serious and we need to do something about them, we also need to recognize that we ourselves, if we're <coughs> going to be a prosperous global leader in the 21st century, have to address our own problems quite apart from what China does or doesn't do. We have to address our educational system and make mm -hmm. it better. We have to have much more emphasis on improving our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to address our energy, our energy dependence, which is a big problem. We need to put mm -hmm. fiscal policy on a sound medium-term track. Um, those are not China. Mm -hmm cause problems. Those are problems that we have to deal with in our own political system. Mm -hmm. And if you blame China or any other country for the major part of your domestic problems, and then people say, well, it's China or mm -hmm. someone else. We have to deal with those yeah. ourselves. That's our problem. We have to address those. If we're going to compete with China, mm -hmm. then we have to do things to make ourselves more competitive and our workers more competitive. Yeah. and our infrastructure and our education system work a bit.